Happy Bead Table Wednesday! Ooh, ooh! I can't believe it's already Wednesday. Time just flies by. I'm still haven't unpacked yet from um, the retreat this weekend. <laughs> yep, that's me. Well, I unpacked my beads. That's the most important part, right? <laughs> Welcome to Bead Table Wednesday. I have a super fun project for you guys today. And so, um, hopefully my camera will stop jiggling. Hello Pam, welcome, nice to have you here. I'm gonna give a shout out to my mom, Beverly, who's recovering from foot surgery. So hopefully she's uh, able to join in today and watch and hi mommy, nice to, nice that you're recovering and I'll FaceTime you later today so you get a private uh, bead table Wednesday. Hey Deb from Seattle, nice to have you here. Hi Cynthia, good to see you here. Kristen, hi guys, how's your day going? How's your middle of the week? Can you believe it's already Wednesday? I have so much to do, always. Hey Jess, I'm really, really looking forward to sharing today's project with you guys. I, um, I really splurged and had fun shopping at the retreat with uh, Vintage and I bought all of their new colors of patinas because I had all the old colors so I had to add. Hey Erin, hi Tammy, hi everybody, thank you guys for joining, hi Cheryl, nice to have you guys here, I miss you too Erin, goes by too quick, hi Sue, nice to have you guys. Um, yeah, so today's project is super fun. So I really love these new colors from Vintage, the patina paints. If you guys haven't tried patina paints, oh my god, you need some right away after this. You're going to go order a million of them. And um, hey, Jess, where can they get them retail? Are these available at like Lima Beads now? I hope so. Um, patina paints are super awesome. They are opaque. You can use... Um, different glosses and um, things to water them down, but I like to use them opaque. I'm gonna use them on metal today. And once they're on metal and dry, they're permanent. You really, you can't scratch them off. They're ready to go. You don't have to heat set it or anything. You just paint it and then it's ready to go. So fun. Hi, Cindy, nice to have you guys here. So I got all these pretty colors and in case you didn't see the project, this is what we're gonna make today. Helps if I turn it around the right way. I made it into a necklace. And so I'm gonna have these kits later on the website today. But um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the painting. And guess what? The best thing, oh, super awesome. The, um, even better, because I love supporting a small business. The patina paints, you guys can find them retail at rusticriverfines.com which my friend Trish, she owns that store and, um, in Galena, and she's also Jess's mom from Vintage, so super excited to be able to support her. So Rustic River Finds, you can find the patinas. And um, guess what? You don't have to know how to paint to do this because uh, when I was in Galena, they had this really cute little scrapbooking type stamping store. I think it's called Stamp It Up With Sue something like that, ink it up with Sue, I don't know. But um, I found these Tim Holtz stencils and it comes in a package like this with three of the stencils. And the stencils just made this project so super easy. Just like old fashioned crafty stencils, you guys don't have to know how to paint. So I'm gonna show you guys how to use these with the vintage patina paints to make a really painterly beautiful pendant. And I think I'm just ready to, um, to turn you around and get you started. What do you guys think? I think it's going to be fun. Oh, before I do that, today was a good mail day. And um, Sarah Jo, I don't know if you're out there yet or if you're going to watch this later, but um, I want to highly recommend this file. This file is a Gourbet file. Gourbet, I think that's how you say it. It's... Um, I'm just now upgrading my files and um, we'll see how it goes. I used it once today and oh my gosh, it files like butter. It's so awesome. This is, um, let's see, what's it called? A Gourbet Swiss pattern file, half round, six inch, two cut, 
file so good guys if you do any metal work it was worth it I think it was like I think it was $30 which is expensive but when I saw what it did I'm like I will never use one of those cheap little tiny files again <laughs> I had upgraded to a bastard file last week and I thought it was really hot stuff but this one really gourmet I'll put a link up um, highly recommend especially if you do any kind of metal work, any kind of filing that you may need, go ahead and give it a try. Um, the package of the file or the package of this one. Is this what you're looking for? The stencil for today, and I will tell you, it's the Tim Holtz stencil and it's um, set number 25. So set number 25, uh, you can just like seriously just google it because there's a ton of them and um a ton of places to get them scrapbooking stores if you have a scrapbooking store check it out uh, this is what the gourbet file came in it's just from euro tool i got it off amazon because I, I know like some people think it's unethical to shop on amazon but um when you live in a small town and you don't have any local places to buy these things you just gotta do what you gotta do and I pay for my prime every year and <laughs> sorry just have to use it um yeah so I shop on Amazon way too much it's just if that's my fatal flaw I guess that's my fatal flaw right <laughs> okay I am going to turn you guys around now sorry I didn't mean to put my face up into the camera and we're going to talk about stenciling I got something else to show you guys real quick. Oh, I'm just going to push that down and get you situated here. I'm really loving my new um, stand for my camera. That was whoo hoo. -hoo. <laughs> okay. So, oh, first I got to show you guys. Um, at our retreat, Tracy Doc from um, Classic Elements gave us this really super awesome coupon and it was a big coupon so I went and shopped first thing Monday morning I mean Sun yeah Monday morning when I got home <laughs> hi Robin hi June hey guys hey Sarah Jo I just talked about files you'll have to go back and watch it because I really found that the best file in the world that's going to help you so metallic leathers you guys from classic elements so luscious love these hi Lynn good to have you here we actually have a nice cool day here in South Haven. So one of the nice things about living next to a lake, it's always a little bit cooler. And then I just kind of splurged and bought like tons of different colors of wax linen. So yummy, yummy, yummy. I'm gonna do some nodding projects later this week. So much fun. Okay guys, let's see. Um, I'm gonna grab one of these cheap trays cause I don't want to paint on my, um, nice little silk <laughs> piece. I got these really cute little plates from um, Party City one year and they work great for organizing in my studio. I'm actually going to use this as a paint palette while I'm painting. Okay guys, I know the metallic leathers are so nice and um, these ones they feel so soft. They're just luscious. It's awesome really been um, researching trends for the fall and like trying to come up with my um, beads that I'm going to make for bead fest because I haven't started yet because <laughs> I just finished with a retreat <laughs> and so um, I was looking up some things and there were all these really opulent metallic looking uh, florals and birds and stuff and ooh, I liked it it was really sparking some ideas so I was glad to see that leather here. Uh, this is 1.5 millimeter leather. So it's it's really great for, um, you could knot with it, you can string beads on it. It's not too thin, not too thick. It's just, just perfect. I really love it. Nice and substantial. Um, I'm not coming to Bead Fest Tacoma because that's way, way far on the other side of the country and it's too, small of a show for me to justify the cost. So I will be doing Bee Fest in Philly in just a few weeks. Yes, in just a few weeks. 
And so um, I'll be talking more about that later on when we get closer, but definitely if you're going to be in Bead Fest Philly, come check it out. Okay, so, oh, I just missed the last comment. I'll have to look back and read. Sorry, guys, I was looking down for a second. All right. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys this. So this is one that I painted a few days ago, and um, I'm just going to go like this with my fingernail. See, nice and scratchy. Does not scratch doesn't come off guys I really um, you really have to like take sandpaper to it and really go after it if you want to get this off of here so once the patina pa patina paints dry they are permanent on this metal all right Doris I will look forward to seeing you in Philadelphia sorry guys the Tacoma is just too far for me and I've already done I'm kind of already booked for the year for events so yeah Philadelphia that's where I'll be next but oh my gosh this is so awesome so what we're going to do is we're going to prep the blanks first and these are the 34 millimeter blanks so they're um, you know they're a good size bigger than a quarter really nice for pendants and what we're going to start with is the vintage buffing block and so I'm going to turn it to the dark gray side, which is the rougher side. Oops. And I'm just going to give it a little buff. Oh, they're also the vintage blanks. They come in the brass, but vintage salvage .etsy.com. You can find them in the darker art metal that they used to have and that they still have in the salvage shop. And you can also find copper. It, from for the vintage pendants too so all three of those colors I like this nice dark brown one my camera sure is shaking a lot I wish I could tighten that up a little okay we'll just be like whoa it's the beads <laughs> I think it's my desk that's shaking okay vintage buffing block um, the there's like a front and a back you'll see on the blank I don't know if you can see it on here, but the front has just a little bit of the edge that's been buffed. So it's just a little bit more finished on one side. And that's the side we're going to do. We're going to take the buffing block and I'm going to scruff it up a little. So just give the metal blank a little tooth for the paint to catch on to. Just like that. So this is the original, and that's the buffed. Pretty cool. Sim super simple, easy to do. And also, because there's some drying time and layers involved in this, I would suggest doing like three or four at a time. Don't just do one and wait for it to dry. You can have several going at once. And I'm gonna try it on this art metal piece too and see how that turns out. Oh, I know. I was looking at their shop yesterday, too. I got tons of their pieces from Vintage Salvage um, at the retreat. I really, I really love the dark art metal. Actually, one of my favorite things of the art metal. Jess, maybe this is a wish list. I should ask you if you guys have them anymore. Are the, um, the 15s art metal uh, jump rings. Those are like my favorite things in the whole world. I think I bought like 500 of them when I found out they were going out of, uh, out of stock and I um, have about probably 10 of them left. I use them like they're precious gold now. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, I'm going to put my necklace aside for a minute. I'm going to pull out my, I'm going to do the purple one first. That's what I'm going to go for. The really nice thing about the vintage patina paints is that you can mix the colors. You don't have to um, go with just in the what's in the bottle. And I did do a little custom mixing, so I'll show you that in just a second. But this color is, um, oh, I'm going to say it wrong. <laughs> 
don't even want to say it because I know I'm going to say it wrong. And you guys will all correct me and laugh, but oh well. And even Joe Allen told me how to say it, and uh, I, for I forgot. Sh uh, I don't know how to say it. Here, I'll put it right here, and then I don't have to say it. Can you guys read it? <laughs> I'm so pathetic. I, I should have uh, should have looked that up. Yep, I can't even. I can't even guess it. It's a it's a stone shall shall. I'll say it my wrong way. Chalcedony. <laughs> Help! <laughs> Such a nut. Anyways, it's a very beautiful light periwinkle purplish color, and it's gorgeous. And you'll be able to see it on the website. You don't know, you don't have to know how to say it to use it. So that's good. I'm going to use this plate as my um, palette too. So I'm going to just put a little bit on this plate. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. I'm going to take my stencil. Calcite. Cal Chalcedony. Kelsey. Oh my god, I won't even try. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Alright, I'm going to position my stencil over the blank how I want it to look. And I have a little bit, this is kind of a, um, it's not a real fantastic paintbrush, but it's stiff. And it's also flattish. Okay, so it's not like a real round. It's a, I say flattish because it's been used a million times. But uh, so you want a brush that's not round, that's small and flat. And I just have my patina paints on here. And I'm going to take and paint on over the stencil. And I'm painting in one direction. And this is going to give it kind of that brush stroke look. And I'm actually going to paint over the whole entire stencil on my blank because I'm going to layer the green on top of this light purple for the leaves and stem. Make sure when you're using the Vintage paints you shake them up really good and then also keep the lid on them because they dry super fast. Okay. That's the first one. All right. And I'm going to let that one dry for a second while I go on to the next one. I'm going to do this one a little bit different on here. You want to hold that stencil down nice and as flat as you can go and then paint in one direction. And I'm also, I'm not using a ton of paint. You don't want it to be real goopy because it will get in underneath the stencil and it will look blobby. So nice and thin coat, just painting it over. There's another one. Okay. Um, Lynn, I am using these mini Tim Holtz stencils. This one's number set 25. You can use any stencil that's um, thin and flexible. Mini stencils are going to work best because we're working mini. So if you have any kind of stencils in your stash somewhere or you see them when you're out and about, go ahead and use them. It's just a plastic, thin plastic stencil. There's nothing fancy to it other than this awesome design that's on the front. I also have a little bit of water off camera and a paper towel. I guess it's kind of on camera. So you just w rinse your brush out with water and dry it off really good. It's really important that your brush is dry when you go to do the next part. Okay, now for the next one I'm going to do a red one, the rose. And it's coral is the color. Oh, 
it's just gorgeous it's a beautiful beautiful color so I'm going to use coral and I'm actually going to mix a tiny bit of shit <laughs> I, didn't, I should have paid attention the purple mix a little bit of the whitish purple with the opal to make it a little bit lighter and I'm going to stick my rose on here just position it wherever you'd like it to go hold it nice and tight down and with a thin coat paint in one direction so easy you don't have to know how to paint or know how to use colors or anything it's just one of those foolproof projects that anyone at all can do and so you can see I got my little rose there okay I'm gonna rinse out my brush again and now I'm ready to go back to the first one and I'm going to add the green for the leaves and what I used for this was green opal and white gold. Hi, mommy. <laughs> My mom's here. Hello. I gave you a shout out earlier, but now that I see you here, you're here, I'm going to say hi to my mom. So green opal, metallic gold. This is going to um, warm up this cooler green just a little bit, and it's going to give it a little bit of a metallic shine. And I already told you guys how into metallic... Um, florals I am so this is right up my alley now my little bottle here I left the top off too long yesterday so it's a little tiny bit clogged up so I just stuck a head pin in it to free it up so just a little dot well that's the other thing these last forever because you just use teeny tiny little dots of these colors and I'm going to add just a smaller, see the ratio, and I'm going to mix those two together. And it just warms up that green a little bit. And that's my new color. So a little metallic, a little um, darker of a green. And now you don't have to use the stencil just like they are, so I'm just going to reposition this one so that the little leaves are going to be on the side here. So I've just moved the stencil around to whatever fits my needs. And I'm going to paint on the leaves in a nice thin coat. Make sure when you lift up your stencil that um, you don't move it around too much because that will blur your image and that one's a little blurry but I'm just gonna leave it as is because I'm gonna go over it with another color in a minute and I'm actually going to go through and do all of my green leaves really quick and I'm gonna darken this up just a little bit with the white gold the best place to buy the paint is rustic river fines Dot com or Lima Beads or you can go to the Vintage website and look up um, their retail providers or retail sellers and there's a variety of people who sell Vintage products retail and then I, I also um, Sometimes you can find it like at Hobby Lobby or some of the big box stores too. I don't know if they have the new colors, but really want to recommend you guys go to rusticriverfinds.com and use, I mean, support small businesses like Trisha's. Okay, so I got the green on that one. And now I'm going to go on the rose one, pull out my rose stencil. And these don't have to be real perfect, like if the color blobs a little, yeah, just leave it. 
don't uh, don't get too precious with this and just work nice quickly nice even thin coats and that one I'm gonna wipe it off you know what happened my brush is a little too wet so I am going to dry my brush put a little more paint on I'm missing the conversation that you guys are having over here I'm gonna have to go back and read um, you can also color on top of these with Sharpie markers when you're done too if you want a black line with a nice thin black Sharpie that was something I had tried out and decided not to do it for the video because I was really trying to do things that might um, I mean that would appeal to somebody if they had no artistic background and felt like I can't paint but you can always use a stencil or I can't draw which of course you guys can anyone can draw okay I'm just gonna leave that one and let it dry and now I'm ready to go back to the first one so you see the um, the benefit of doing several of these so that you don't have to wait for them to dry <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to mix a little bit more of the white gold to darken this color up just a little bit more so I have more of a yellowish green and then I'm going to go back through and add some more layers and these are really light thin coats make sure your brush is bone dry that's my biggest uh, piece of advice that I can give you because if your brush is wet at all it will um, kind of bubble up and not give you as good as results so and I also just wipe off the back a little bit of the stencil so it doesn't get real goopy okay let's see this one still I'm gonna go ahead and do it now you don't have to heat set these at all they are ready to go but if you're impatient and you're um, want to get this done a little bit quicker you can just give it a little um, hit with your embossing gun to heat those paints up and dry them really quick of course you wouldn't want to do that on a plastic tray so make sure you're on like a metal cookie sheet or something or um, one of those one of those little Teflon what is that called? That sheet that you roll out that you can work on top of that's non-stick uh, that goes with a lot of the crafting materials. I forget the name of it. Maybe Jess will put it out. Okay, now I have this darker green. I'm just gonna layer this on top of that lighter green to get a little more definition because the first layer that I did was a little goopy. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to go back to my red one. And I'm going to take my red. I probably want to make sure my brush is, make sure that brush is super dry. Okay. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to position a quarter of one. So, you know, you don't have to have the image right in the center. It can go off just a little bit. Oh, thanks, Jess. Yeah, the Ranger Ink um, nonstick craft sheet is a great thing to work on, too. I have one somewhere in the studio. Who knows where? Okay, so I'm just to have a little bit of the rose sticking off on that side. And now I'm going to, I'm going to do the second layer of the flower just a little bit thicker. I'm actually even going to change the flower up a little. So my second layer that I'm doing on the flowers is a little bit thicker than the first one because I actually want to use that goopy texture a little bit to my advantage okay I don't know if you guys can see that 
but can you see how the texture actually adds a little bit of dimension and um, gives shape to that flower a little bit. So that's why I gooped it on just a little bit more on top of that. And that one's almost done. Pretty happy with that one. Now I'm going to pull out this flower again, the second one that I had done. Make sure your brush is bone dry. Probably can't say that enough. Um, yeah, the mini, the set, this is it in case you missed it, Tim Holtz stencils. You check out your scrapbooking section at your um, local store or Amazon. And then um, this one comes with three different patterns. There are also some bigger stencils too. So when you're ordering online, make sure, if you do order it online, make sure it says mini stencil because the other ones are more like for craft projects and too big for the jewelry. So make sure it says mini stencil. Okay, I'm gonna reposition, this is my light flower that I did. And now I'm gonna reposition this in the same direction that it was earlier. There we go, and I'm going to paint that second layer a little bit thicker than I did the first. I have just one little spot that I don't like. Okay, and I'm gonna leave that one for right now. I'm gonna go back to this one. And I'm going to reposition this one. And so, yeah, if you could do like three or four of these at a time, you could be a whole factory and have a whole table of them. Then you can kind of work back and forth as one dries, and then you can go on to the next one. Okay, so I have that layered nice and right on top of the first one that I did so that the lines are going to match up pretty close. If it's a little off, it's okay. And I'm making sure I'm doing this goopy, but I'm still going in one direction. And that will give you the look of flower petals. Okay, I'm gonna peel that off. I'm gonna let this dry again. I'm gonna come back and do the leaf one more time on here because it got a little goopy. That's the other thing. Um, I never mind having things not perfect because then I can kind of show you guys what to do if you make a mistake. Like I just dropped my uh, top to my paint on the floor, so I gotta grab that real quick. Sorry, because I don't want my paint to dry out. Sorry about that. All right. I think. <laughs> nope, not quite yet. Yeah, I'll let these dry for just another little second. This one is done. Uh, I'm digging that one. I'm going to call that one done. The rose. Do I want to? Maybe I'll do a little bit more green on it. Just a tiny bit. That's the great thing about these stencils is um, being able to move them around and get just what you want and need out of them. So I'm going to add one little leaf to this corner here. on this side. Oh, I have this. There's this cute little branch part. And I will put that there. Actually, I'm going to 
actually want the color to contrast, so I think I'm going to do more of the green opal by itself. So it's a little bit lighter on top of here. There we go. So I think I'll call that one done. Okay. Oh, and thanks, Jess, for sharing about the uh, brass blanks. Yeah, I'm going to let this dry for just a second because I do one more thing to them. Well, actually, two more things. Just one more thing. One more thing. So they're a little fussy. I mean, it's not just slapping the paint on. Like, you go back and forth and um, work with layers to give a nice depth to your image. Also, using different colors and different variations of, like, greens and different layers of the purple that just adds a really nice depth to the painting instead of just flat. Okay, the other color I'm going to use, I just put a little dab of the white gold on here and now this beautiful rose gold. It's not just a gorgeous color. I'm just so in love with these Jess. I can't even tell you how much I love them. I'm going to do equal amounts of the rose gold and the white gold together. Why? I like the colors when they mix together. <laughs> I wanted a color that's just a little bit warmer than the rose gold and so I'm just adding a tiny bit of the white gold which has more of a greenish gold and I'm going to position this on here pretty close to where it was before and then I'm just going to dot on the paint for the center petals. Oh, missed one, so I'll try that again. Okay. And so that's just little tiny dots in the center of the flower that I did. I'm going to do that on the other purple one. Now, of course, if you only had one or the other, you could use just the white gold and it would look yellowish, which would look like the center of a flower. But why use one color when you can use two? <laughs> right? Okay. So. There we go. And because that's a little blobby right there still, I'm going to go over with one more leaf there to uh, to define that little area just a tiny bit more. And so what do I want to do when I'm going to go over it with another color? You want to make sure there's enough contrast. So I'm going to use a little bit of the opal green by itself so that it's brighter on top of there. And I'm going to position my little leaf right where I want it. of moving this around and adding a little bit of the green texture in there. Oh, sorry, had a little message on there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to call almost done and I'm going to uh, do my last step, which let me turn around and... Okay. The last thing I did after these are dry completely, and this one's already dry, is I'm going to take the buffing block one more time and just give it a little once over on top. Kind of distress it a little. Also makes the color a little less shiny because that's one of the things that um, these colors, not only do they dry opaque, but they're a little bit shiny when they dry. And so I'm going to buff them with the buffer and my good old Renaissance wax. 
taking just a really thin coat of it and dabbing it on there. And that's going to dull down the um, shininess of the paint. And that is going to be finished. Do the same thing here. And you don't want to... Um, this buffing block, I'm doing it really light. I'm just very gently go, going over it. <laughs> you mean my lifetime supply of Renaissance wax? <laughs> no little containers for me. Um, probably takes me like two years to use one of these big ones, but um, I use it all the time. And this last one, do that too. Yeah, this little, uh, my little buffing block, woo, it, uh, it's my, it's my big help. Okay. Now, the Vintage Blank just has one hole at the top, and as you can see on my pendant here, oop, if I turn it around the right way, I have two holes. So all I'm going to do is take my hole punch and center it right below the top hole. And this is a 1.5 millimeter hole punch from Euro, Euro Tool. And you use it just like a paper punch, punch it in, and then pull it off. And there you have a two hole pendant. You could also use these for bracelets. So just give it a punch. And I'm not going to show how to put the necklace together because it's honestly just wire wrapping. Oh, I will show this off though because isn't this yummy? That beautiful raw brass color adds such a nice contrast to the dark, darker brass. And this is the Para Wire in Solid Brass 20 gauge. And I guess I'll just I'll just demo using it once, just for people that maybe are tuning in, haven't done a wire wrap before. So I'm gonna take about five or six inches of this 20 gauge wire. And I have my pendant with the hole on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to do a large loop with my round nose pliers. And I'm gonna straighten out that loop so that it's going um, right up and down from my wire. Okay, now you have to open your hole, I mean your loop, and slide on your pendant, because I'm not using a jump ring, I'm just using the wrapped loop. And I grab onto the top of my loop and I'm going to wrap my wire tightly two times underneath, I mean on top of the loop, and then I'm going to keep wrapping the wire on top of the first layers to give it that messy wrap look. And then I'm going to tuck in my little tail. You always want your tails to end at the back. So always cut your wire and end it so that it's going to be in the back of your pendant and not in the front. I'm just going to tighten that up a little. Then you'll throw on a disc bead. So we got my little Humble Beads branch bead in exactly the same color as the Vintage Patina paints. And that was just by random happenstance. I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> and now I'm going to do a wrap loop on top, same way. So bend the wire forward, grab it with the round nose pliers and pull it towards you and push it over the bead so that it makes a loop. And you're going to grab onto your loop, twist it tightly around two times, and then two to three more times on top of the underwires to make that messy wrap. Cut your wire so it's going to end in the back and tuck your tail in. And then I use an etched jump ring which has a really nice rope-like texture to it from Vintage. And I'm going to put that on there. 
Then I took these, um, this is just a plain copper colored um, metal leaf, like a skeleton leaf, and I took into the opal, green opal on top of it to make it that teal color. So you can also paint your findings that you're going to use with this pendant. Like I had just this plain copper and then I painted it with the opal and then I did the same technique where I buffed it a little and put a little of the Renaissance wax. I have a few little tiny dangles on the bottom with a jump ring. And then I did two little links on the top with leaves and check glass. So that's all there is to this necklace and I added a gunmetal chain so it's nice and long, hangs down beautifully. So that's the project guys. Anyone can do this. You could do these and um, the vintage blanks come even smaller and you could do them for earrings. They come in different shapes. Uh, they have them in all different a million different shapes but they also have like squares and rectangles and you could do little flowers for earrings on those. Now the vintage paints they come in every single color you could possibly want. These just happen to be the newer colors and sometimes working with a really limited palette like just these. I only have five colors here and really if you only wanted four, these four would definitely do the project perfectly. And so you don't need a ton of them, but they sure are fun when you have the whole rainbow. So, and I do have multiples of every color, <laughs> mostly because I teach with them in classes, but uh, it, it's definitely fun to get all the colors. And then you don't have to pick and choose. All right. I'm going to finish putting these kits together and get them on my website so you guys can make these if you want, just like the one that I've made. And I'll have a rose option and then the purple flower option. All right. I think that's it, guys. What do you think? You're going to try it? I really hope you do. I'd really love to see what you make with them. Also, Vintage has some metal blanks that are like for cuffs and shaped that will go um, for your wrists. So you could do bracelets with these too. You could put a word on the back before you paint, but you will see the texture. So another thing you could do, Lynn, is take little tiny um, rubber stamps and stays on ink and you can um, stamp a little saying on the back of it with the stays on ink and a rubber stamp. You could even um, paint it with one of the vintage colors before you do that so it was nice and light and not so dark. All right, guys, that's it for B-Table Wednesday. Um, you're the squeaky wheel. <laughs> I must have missed that part, Sarah Jo. What kind of trouble did you get into? <laughs> I know, guys, now you need to go out and find stencils. So I'll just show it one more time. Tim Holtz, these mini stencils, they're really beautiful. He has lots of different patterns, too but I really like this number 25. So that's it. That's the project, you guys. I'm going to go start working on orders and answering emails and doing all this stuff that I'm supposed to be doing on a Wednesday, even though I'd rather play with my beads. <laughs> Your brainstorming classes. Oh, yes, guys. Oh, my God. We had such a good time at the Adornments Retreat. I see quite a few of you here in the group today. Oh, it was so much fun. As soon as Jess and I were done with the retreat, we started planning 2008. <laughs> it was so awesome. So next year, around the same time, we're going to have the Adornments Retreat again. And we'll be putting out the save the date for you guys to um, start planning and getting your vacation time so that you guys can join us next year. Because we just had a ball and we want to do it again and again and again and again. And so, um, yes, Susan, you will definitely have to join us next year. So I'm going to let you guys go. Go have fun making stuff. Go find some stencils. You can get them on Amazon or you can um, you can check out your scrap, local scrapbook area at your craft store and see if they have some mini stencils. And uh, really, I know I've seen stencils that are like on metal pieces too that are really thin. 
and there's no reason why you can't use those little tiny stencils too those would work just as well so any thin stencil that's all you need it can be plastic or metal so um yes Shelly the event is going to be the same week next year so the third week of or the middle of July whatever I haven't looked at the calendar to see if it's the second or third week I think it's the third one but we will be there again hopefully we'll have um cooler weather and a little less rain <laughs> that was the only that was the only bad part but it was a beautiful place I wish I had had another day to explore and play in Galena but we had such a good time all right guys have a great bead table Wednesday next week I think um I'll be back I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for next week maybe we'll play with files and uh I'll show you guys some tips with files since I have my new file we'll see or or maybe I'll make a I want to do a jewelry project we'll do a jewelry project I should quit thinking out loud all right guys <laughs> I am going to go uh get to work and quit dreaming and I will see you guys next week Wednesday for bead table Wednesday same time same place you guys have a great week stay creative